So Nathan, we got three obstacles coming up, right? Right. There is butt puncher. Yep. Kind of tests uh, departure and uh, breakover angle. Uh -huh. That's coming up right now. Okay. Then uh, one tree hill. Okay. And then uh, ass scratcher. So basically, these are all titles from U2 songs. You know, I didn't think about that. Yeah, they are. Pretty much. <laughs> all right. So this one, we'll see just how much uh, well we scrape. <laughs> It's all good, I got boron. <laughs> you do. <laughs> and I promised Jeep I wouldn't break it, so I've got that going for me. A little bit of a butt clencher. Nathan, this is the epic comparison I have been waiting for all year because you know what, my man? I am driving the brand new Jeep Gladiator and it's a Rubicon. Yeah, yeah, and I'm driving, the only thing that can really challenge it, I'm driving the Chevy Colorado ZR2 Bison. We've got the two most off-road worthy trucks in the mid-size truck segment, and at the end of this video, we're gonna tell you which one we would buy if it were our money. Under the hood of the Gladiator is well, FCA's ubiquitous power plant. It is a 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 that puts out eh, just under 300 horsepower. And of course, it is mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Now, this is an engine that you can currently get in the Wrangler. So the front of this Jeep is pretty much very similar to a regular old Wrangler. But I think Nathan has something special under his hood. All right, guys, this is the Duramax 2.8. That's right, it's a diesel, and it puts out 181 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. It's a torque monster by comparison. It's hooked up to a six-speed automatic transmission, and, well, just like the Rubicon, it has front and rear lockers, and <laughs> a hell of a lot more torque. I'm loving how much torque this thing puts out. All right, Nathan, you know going off-road isn't about torque at all. It's about length, and. I've got the longer uh, truck, you know that. You do have a longer truck. All right, how about uh, lockers? I've got front and back lockers. Do you have those? I do. Really? Yeah. I've got special shocks made by Fox. I've got Multimatic shocks. Really? Yeah, I do. You know, I've got skid plates everywhere. <laughs> oh, I've got a ton of skid plates, over 200 pounds extra of skid plates. Damn. How about a disconnectable front sway bar? Yeah, no, I don't have that, but I do have an independent front suspension, which you don't have. Yeah, but going off-road, you want that, you know, girth of... <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, the articulation kind of matters. But you know what? On-road, this thing does handle pretty good. Yeah, so does this. I mean, you know, with the longer wheelbase once again, <laughs> I've got much more kind of softness in my... Well, oh, I don't have softness. All right, let's just take these off-road. <laughs> I was having a little bit of fun with Nathan when I said that torque doesn't matter. Torque is really what matters when you're off-roading. And I've only got 260 pounds of torque, whereas he's got almost 100 pound foot more, which is a significant difference because really crawling is just about crawling. So that isn't about horsepower. Horsepower is about top speed. So that diesel does have quite the advantage. Even though I've got less torque, this one does just fine. One part that is really worrying me is, of course, this long wheelbase. That breakover angle of 20 degrees isn't grand, and I've got a tow hitch that's sticking out the back of this thing. Uh, and all of these obstacles test the departure, approach, and breakover angle of these trucks. So we'll see which one does better. I've been living with the Bison for a few days. No, I don't call it the ZR2. I call it the Bison. Because if you're gonna spend this much money on a damn vehicle, you damn well should be calling it whatever code name they throw at it. AEV wants to call it a Bison, I'm calling it a Bison, because you're spending over $5,000 more on armor, and it feels like it. Look, it's only 200 pounds more, which is almost one person who works at TFL, except for Tommy, it's almost two Tommies. And that much weight added to a vehicle like this, you feel it. 
it really feels like it's just constantly sucked to the ground. It feels really solid underneath you. There's more, of course. Yep. This package has embroidered seats. It has special unique bumpers. Two bumpers, actually. It has special wheels. There's a lot of badging on the outside that says AEV. You will know this vehicle coming and going and living inside of it that it is something unique. As it is, this thing's a beast. And this diesel, well, so far I haven't gone anywhere near 2,000 RPM on any obstacle. <laughs> it just over the obstacle. No problem. Of course, this is the business end of the truck. This is what people buy trucks for, right? So that it can haul stuff and tow stuff. This truck hauls 1,600 pounds worth of, well, anything you want it to haul. Bikes, hay, goats, and best of all, it has a much higher tow rating than Nathan. When properly equipped, it'll tow about 7,500 pounds. Like the Jeep, you can hold over 1,500 pounds back here, and that's pretty good. Unfortunately, this vehicle, as equipped, can only tow 5,000 pounds. And that's distressing to me because it's got that big bad diesel. You know Nathan, it's really a toss up when it comes to towing wars because both of these, when you get them properly equipped, will tow about 7,500. How am I doing here guys? That's bold. I'll try. Hopefully we got a lot of Well stop. We gotta go a little uh, bit more passenger. Okay, go, go. Yeah, there, there's not enough break over. Yeah. Actually, it would have little let down that Roman had to go around that obstacle, but, you know, in retrospect, he would have definitely scraped. And this thing has a lot of armor. He has armor, but I think this actually has a lot more. And frankly speaking, he doesn't want to destroy the vehicle, and I get it. What makes this truck so great is it's got a big back seat, unlike most mid-sized trucks. But that also means that it has, well, just a lot of length, which gives it a breakover angle that isn't all that great, just over 20 degrees. There's a lot about this truck that makes tons of sense for off-roading, but this is not one of them. This is my Achilles heel because this exhaust sticks out like crazy. It's like having a cigar in your mouth or something like that, the way it hangs out. And I am afraid that I might scrape it on fins and things. And that's saying a lot because that's not that challenging of a course. All right, this is the first test. Well, really the second test of departure angle. And I got a feeling I'm gonna scrape. Yeah, yeah, definitely scrape there. Yeah, that would be scraping. Luckily, it's just a toe hitch receptor, so it's not a big deal. All right. I don't think I'll scrape. I scraped. That's okay. Boron! The approach angle is actually a little limited in this, and that's because the AEV bumper is a different configuration. And from what I understand, you can mount a winch in it. All right, Nathan. So uh, I didn't see what happened with you, but my ass scratched pretty bad. Uh, yeah. I'm talking about, you know. The, yeah, the truck. Yeah, yeah, I yeah not, not my ass. Yeah, um, I, I scraped a little on the front and the back. Did you really? Yeah, but I got boron. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. And you know what? Honestly, this thing, it's casual about it. It's just like you feel a little funk. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that with a different type of skid plate, you'd feel it even more. I think it absorbed a lot of that. Dude, with 200 pounds of skid plates <laughs> underneath this thing, yeah, you could you could run over like a you know improvised explosive device. Yeah, that's exactly. It feels like a military vehicle. You're absolutely right. So one of the things that uh, is a little bit hard to believe is that the launch edition of this truck was actually sixty-three thousand dollars, and they made only about four thousand of them. Nathan's truck is $53,000, and that's as fully loaded as it gets, so that's a $10,000 difference. Now, we don't have a Monroney in this truck, so I just don't know how expensive this is, but I'm guessing this is about a $60,000 truck because we've got all the safety features, we've got the Rubicon version, it's pretty much a loaded vehicle. So it's $7,000 more than Nathan's truck. That is a lot of money, and when you consider the launch edition was $10,000 more, that's a big number. That's a really big number. Of course, uh, Nathan's truck does have the diesel, but then I've got a convertible. So 
you know, depends what you want. I mean, do you want better fuel economy or do you want better towing? Diesels are just much better at towing. Jeep says this one gets 17 in the city and 22 on the highway, which isn't bad. But keep in mind, guys, that, you know, apples to apples, both of these trucks are available in a 3.6 liter V6 because Nathan has the upgraded power plant. You could get a V6 as well. And you may be wondering, why didn't we air down on this? And the reason is simple. We just don't have enough time. Jeep lent us this truck for a couple hours. And so we're trying to make the most of it. Normally we would air down. And you're also maybe wondering, why don't we go apples to apples? Why don't we go 3.6 to 3.6? And sometimes, I hate to say it, but we don't have a choice as to what kind of truck we get. You know, this time Chevy sent us the diesel and Jeep gave us the only truck that's available, which is a 3.6. Of course, Jeep says that there is a diesel coming. So we'll have to stay tuned for that. But for right now, it's diesel versus gas. And actually, I kind of like that. That's not a bad thing. So this next obstacle tests the truck's breakover angle and of course departure angle and I've got the little cheat sheet here and it says the departure angle is let's see 26 degrees approach is 43.4 and breakover is 20.3 so uh, we're gonna test those numbers and see what they mean in the real world now here we go nice and slow nice and slow front wheel just nice and slow nice and slow Whoa. If breakover is gonna hit, it's gonna hit. Whoa! Ooh, right there. Well, that was good. That was better than I, than I thought. But departure's not gonna be good. There's gonna be some scratchiness going on. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's the sound of uh, American Steel on American Slick Rock. <laughs> I wonder how Nathan does. I can't see a damn thing over this hood bulge. If we don't test it, we don't know. So at over $5,000 for the upgrades for all this extra armor, 200 pounds, I say it's okay to scrape and bounce around and hit really hard. So is that the sound of... Uh... <laughs> I heard you hit too, by the way. I did, but I think you hit in the front. Yeah, I did. Yeah. You know, if, if you're a really discerning connoisseur, if you listen very carefully, you could tell the difference between regular old steel on Slick Rock versus the sound of boron. That's right, it was just rock. like boom. Boom. Yeah, yeah, boron. All right, next is uh, One Tree Hill. Right, one Tree Hill. One, that's the one where you don't want to like go into the side of the tree. And if you do, Bono comes out and yells at you. All right, don't go to the side of the tree. This is an interesting obstacle because if you get it wrong, the truck slides into the side of the tree. So I think on this one, I will definitely lock the rear diff because I need all the traction possible. Here we go. I think this should be cake. With a rear locker, I don't think this thing's gonna have any struggle at all. Uh oh, it's sliding toward the tree. Shouldn't, shouldn't have talked too early. No, it's fine. No problem, one tree hill, easy peasy. Now one of the cool things in this Jeep are these trail pages. Uh, it gives you obviously all the temperatures that you need. It gives you uh, pitch and roll, which is really good. But I think most importantly, it gives you these trail cams. So that's my rearward facing camera. Actually, that's my frontward facing camera. And that's my rearward facing camera. So uh, there's Nathan and Tommy. Uh, I can actually see if I'm going to uh, hit anything either in the front of the Jeep or behind the Jeep. Uh, and that's pretty darn cool. I wonder if I can zoom in. Yeah, look at that. Look at that, I can zoom in. How cool is that? What happens when I hit clean camera? It squirts, look at that. It squirts on my camera. <laughs> There's Tommy. That is the coolest thing, dude. I love that. I can squirt my camera. I can squirt my camera. <laughs>
Yeah. Hills. What is it? The Hills Angels. The Hills Angels. The Moab chapter. So this is Baby As Scratcher, A-A-Z Scratcher, and of course, full on As Scratcher. And mm. this is a test of um, approach and departure angles, Nathan. And your friend's looking a little scratchy there. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, the nose is just a little tiny bit longer than the original ZR2 nose, and that's AEV's choice. Now, don't tell Jeep, but you know the little receptacle for the hitch? Yeah. You know where you put the hooks? Yeah. I bent it a little. Yeah. Uh, just a little. Yeah. You you bend every time you come out here. Not bent. You know, it's just a little bit. It's not quite straight. It's okay. It's, it's okay? It, I, I think I'm okay with it. Okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah, we got to get the Jeep back to Jeep in uh, hour 15. And right now this guy's broken down on the trail on a scratcher. It looks like he broke some suspension members. And uh, I don't know what we're going to do because uh, we could try to go around him, but that makes... Well, let me show you. Here's the problem. Right? That's just going to be boom. I'm just going to hit hit the nose. So, uh, yeah. yeah. All right, broken down Jeep is out of the way. All right, here we go. Going down the as scratcher. So this is really all about departure angle. See how much I hit. I think Nathan's gonna have an issue with his nose. I may have an issue with my as. If you're wondering why I'm saying as, well, a long-term Jeep Comanche has plates that say AAZ. If it's scratching, oh yeah, there we go, there we go. A little bit of scratchiness there. And now for the big boy. Will I bury the nose? Will I drag the as? So there you go, 28 degrees. Well, it's probably getting some scratchiness. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, that. That's a good one, huh? That's why they call it Slick Rock. <laughs> Roman, yes. why are you wearing that? Because we have to give Chevy some love. You know, at TFL, we are equal opportunity lovers, Nathan. <laughs> well, I will say this. On the trail, most of the guys here have Jeeps, right? Yeah. But I was getting a lot of thumbs up driving this thing. And I got to say that, you know, the launch edition of this bad boy is $63,000. Yeah. That's 10K more than that. That is a lot of money. Yeah, considering what you get for the money and the fact that this has the diesel for that money, that's pretty impressive. But I have something that you don't have. Oh yeah? Yeah, I've got a topless convertible. <sighs> that's true. Uh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Guys, thanks for watching. Remember, head back to tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, real world Moab off-road reviews. And by the way, Nathan, you know that guy who held us up? Yeah? Lower control arm right. bracket. Broke it clean off. You completely collapsed his front wheel. Seriously did, didn't he? Yeah. You should bring a high lift jack if you come out here. And you know what the scary thing is? Huh. I almost did the same thing because I was trying to show him the off-road pages and I didn't notice where my wheel was at. Oh. So luckily, uh, no damage was done. All right, let's get this bad boy back to Jeep. See you guys.